Hello, Herman here with a new video in the ClearPass workshop series where we will build a ClearPass deployment from scratch and integrate with Wired Wireless Active Directory and much more. In this video, we will be installing the HTTPS server certificate on our ClearPass. As you have seen in the previous video, we were able to configure the ClearPass initially so we can access it through the web UI. We installed the licenses, uh, we enabled interim accounting, so everything uh, should be good to go. However, you still see that we have an insecure connection here and let's uh, fix that. What I did already is create a DNS entry. So you can see there is a DNS entry, but still we don't have the proper certificate. And in order to fix that, we need to install an HTTPS certificate. And it's really important to get your certificates done right uh, because I've seen many deployments where people thought, oh, certificates will come later. But in the end, uh, yeah, they got stuck at some point uh, and they didn't think about the certificates. And once they resolved the issues with the certificate, suddenly everything started to work. Very important to read is the ClearPass Certificates 101 tech note on arubanetworks.com slash ClearPass docs. So as a summary of the ClearPass Certificates 101 tech note, there are two very important certificates in ClearPass. First is the radio certificate and the radio certificate is recommended to have that from a private certificate authority. So a Microsoft PKI or other enterprise PKI in your environment. And uh, you should use the same radio certificates on all of your ClearPass appliances. The HTTPS certificate typically needs to be public uh, because you will have guests, uh, you will maybe do uh, onboarding. And at that point, you don't want to see any certificate warnings. So get a public certificate for the HTTPS. And if you have multiple ClearPass appliances, then probably having a wildcard certificate or a multi-SAN certificate that has multiple names is uh, probably the best because you can put it on all of your ClearPass appliances. So let me show you how you can install that certificate. So get rid of this one. So the certificates, these are here under administration, then certificates and the certificate store. You can see here uh, when we have multiple servers, uh, when we build a cluster, then you can select the server here and here you see the usage of the certificate. And as you can see, the default is the Radius EAP certificate, uh, which now is a self-signed certificate. And we have an ECC and RSA HTTPS server certificate. As you can see, these are also self-signed certificates. So what we first start to do is because I have an RSA HTTPS certificate, I will disable the ECC and that will make sure that only the RSA certificate is enabled. So let's refresh the session. You see, we need to yeah, refresh it again. And uh, now the certificate has changed. So uh, let's have a look here, accept. So we are here back. Let's go to the server certificates again, certificate store and go to our RSA server certificate. Now we can do a few things. So uh, what we could do is we can create a certificate signing request from the ClearPass, fill in all the information like the subject alternative names, everything and I get it signed by a public CA. What I did is I requested a wildcard certificate uh, from my CA uh, Let's Encrypt, which is uh, perfect for lab purposes, maybe not for production because the certificates are only valid for 90 days and you have a lot of maintenance to get everything uh, done. Uh, but here we can use the import certificate because I have a so-called uh, P12 file from it. So it's the server certificate. It's the RSA for this specific server. I have a P12, let's browse to that P12. So here it is. So it's a wildcard star.lab.airheads.eu. And we need to put the password in. What we now see is that this certificate was issued by a certificate authority and the certificate authority before you import the certificate needs to be enabled in the certificate trust list. So uh, let's do that. So go to the trust list here was some CA with the name X3 in it. So we click on it and we can uh, enable it and it's already for usage other, which is good enough. So go back to the certificate store. Let's try again. And now you can see the certificate is imported. So we have a star.lab.airheads.eu. 
which is the certificate uh, name so that will match everything so the name that i created cppm1 minus pub.lab.airheadspear.eu i created it in the dns as you have seen before that should work so let's have a look if that does work awesome now we see the lock is closed and it's verified by let's encrypt this will make sure that the certificate is properly installed and everything the naming and so on is working let me log in again you can now see that we are completely uh, done here the reason for installing this certificate is in that in the next video we will be creating a cluster and for the cluster uh, it makes sense to have the certificates uh, set up uh, before you create the cluster uh, because for the clustering you need to have trust to get the trust done prior to creating the cluster is probably better than fixing it afterwards so that's it for now hope you like this video if you do please press the subscribe button to get notified when we post that video on clustering as well if you have any questions uh, or remarks put them in the comments below this video and don't forget to press the like button as well thanks for watching and till next time